But if you want the glory of God in your family, in your relationships, in your marriage, in order for that to happen, I just have one word for you. Somebody show us an answer. We are in need of a savior. We need an awakening, a fresh anointing. Open our eyes again and show us the power. You want to attract the weighty presence of God's glory on your life? Well, on today's program, we're going to talk about one of the secrets, one of the things that we all got to deal with in order to be clear in our spirit for the presence of God to fill our lives. So as we go into the teaching today, stay tuned for the whole show and learn the secret to overcoming this hindrance to the presence of God in your life. You know what I believe too? I believe you could so shut the door on the devil for your family that no generational iniquity or weakness has a right to travel down your family line. I believe you can so shut the door that every curse is replaced by a supernatural blessing. So the priests consecrated themselves, separated themselves. In verse 12, all the Levites who were singers, all those of Asaph, Haman, Jedithan, with their sons and kinsmen arrayed in fine linen, having cymbals, harps, and lyres. So they had singers, they had musicians. They stood at the east end of the altar, and with them 120 priests blowing trumpets. 120 priests. See, I, you know, this really in the Old Testament shadows the 120 that would be in the upper room. See, because here, God filled Solomon's temple with glory. In the upper room, God filled his people with glory. Because you're a walking temple. When the trumpeters and singers were joined in unison, making one sound, everybody say one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and other instruments for song and praise the Lord, saying, For his good, his mercy, loving kindness endure forever. Then, everybody say then. then. Then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. The temple became so filled with a heavy weight of glory that the priests couldn't even keep doing what they were doing. Their program was all messed up. I think, I think some of our church meetings, we need to have our programs messed up. I mean, look, I'm all for order and structure and program. I think it's great. I think we need it. But I'll tell you what. If all you have is a program and you don't have the presence... It'll look great on the outside, but it will not transform hearts. Look, the church is God's house. It is his house. It's not our house. It's his house. And he says, my house will be filled with glory. So they came together, the worshipers, the singers, the instruments, they came together with one sound. Everybody say one sound. one sound. You want to know another thing that attracts the glory of God? Unity. Yeah. Unity attracts the glory. You know, and you know what that's a part of? Having an unoffended heart. Yeah. Offense will break the glory. Unity will attract the glory. You want the glory of God in your own life? It starts with you personally. First, be unified with God. Have a clear heart before God. Then, you want the glory in your family? Stay unified with your family. 
Because the greatest test is at home. If your house is filled with strife and turmoil and anger, it's because somewhere someone got offended and they didn't forgive. And then you have the presence departing. How many want God's presence on your household? You know what that means? If you want God's, if you really want God's, how many want God's presence on your marriage? How many want a marriage in heaven, a marriage made in heaven? Look, you might as well as have a marriage made in heaven now, because when you get to heaven, there is no more marriage. So you better make the best of it now while you got it. And if you're single, don't worry. You're married to Jesus. <laughs> I just love that. They're like, no. I want my mate, praise God. Yeah, well, in the meantime, you're married to Jesus. Hallelujah. But if you want the glory of God in your family, in your relationships, in your marriage, wherever, in order for that to happen, I just have one word for you. Die. Amen. Just die. Because in order for there to be unity, someone has to die. I'm telling the truth. If you got two different opinions, it could either clash or one could die. Ideally, both half die. Don't just let the other person die. You die too. Come on now. Ideally, you know, God created marriage, two shall become one. That's why the scripture says, he who sits in heaven laughs. Because he looks down at us, and he's like, ha, ah, two will become one. Ah, you know, and he just has a kick watching us. But in order for two to become one, somewhere... Like this one has to lose a half, this one has to lose a half, and then they become one. So ideally, both half die. That's fair. Come on now, be fair. Wife, don't make your husband die all the time. Come on, be fair, share the death. Stay unified, stay in agreement. One will put a thousand to flight, two will put 10,000 to flight. When you make the choice, when you make the choice, I refuse to be offended. I will not be offended. I will keep my heart free. I will keep my heart in agreement. When you come into that place of agreement, there is dunamis power and glory released over your life. So if you were created by the Lord with a meek, submissive personality, you'll die a lot easier. But if you were created with a strong personality, sorry. You're just going to die a little bit harder. And you know who you are. They go kicking and screaming the whole way. Oh, this is a perfect time for me to hold the mirror up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Unity attracts the glory. Unity within a family. Unity within a church. Oh, now here's a miracle. Unity between churches. Unity attracts the glory. So if you want unity, 
I, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. The greatest sign of your spiritual maturity is not how much you shake. It's not how much you manifest when the glory's on you. Because look, a dead person can manifest when the glory hits them. There's no sign of their spiritual maturity. They're dead. I, look, I love, I love when people manifest under the Holy Spirit. I love it. I, I love it because I love action. I love the moving of God. But the greatest sign of our level of walking with God is when someone mistreats you. Is when someone is on Christ's life. Because guess what? God has planted you in a local church. And there's probably going to be people around you that don't quite look like Jesus yet. He's in there. You just got to look a little harder to find him. But he is there. And the greatest sign of your spiritual power is when someone is rude and obnoxious to you. Can you smile and love them back? And the greatest test will be at home. Say amen or ouch. Because look, I know reality. It is easy to be nice in front of strangers because you put on your best behavior. But when you are by yourself at home, the real you comes out. So, we're on a journey to get the real you to look as much like Jesus as possible. But you see, you can't let the actions of other people determine your own heart. Come on now. Don't let someone else's behavior steal the glory from your life by getting offended at their behavior. Forewarned is forearmed. Hallelujah. Forewarned is forearmed. You know what that means? That means you are ready. Have you ever desired for God's glory to be upon you, within you, around you, moving through you? Well, I am so excited today to share with you my most favorite teaching series of all time. It's called The Protocol of the Glory, Living in the Cloud of His Presence. On this teaching series, you will learn about living in the Holy of Holies, the power that is hidden in the glory, the cloud of glory, and transfiguration glory. You know, we've been in services and meetings where the whole atmosphere becomes charged with the glory of God. We've even seen literal tangible clouds of His presence form in the room. But there are times you can't see the cloud, but it's there. There's an atmosphere of heaven that comes in. In this teaching series, I'm gonna teach you the secrets of the protocol of coming into the Holy of Holies, living in the Holy of Holies, and then what is found in the cloud of His glory. What is hidden in that secret place? And we teach you how to access realms of God's power that are not accessible in the natural dimension, but you've got to go into the glory realm, into the glory dimension, to be able to begin to receive these deeper dimensions of God's power. We'll also teach you about His transfiguration glory. When Jesus went up to the top of the mountain, He was transfigured before His disciples. There was a transfiguration glory upon Jesus where the light of God shone through Him. And, and his true identity was revealed. There is something that happens in you when his transfiguration glory gets a hold of you on the inside. Suddenly, you begin to get transformed as you behold his face, as you behold his glory. So I'm so excited for you to get a hold of this teaching today. It will transform your entire life. Order your four CD set today with your love gift of $30 or more. 
Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or visit us online at mattsorger.com. There is power in partnership. You know, in 1 Kings 17, the widow partnered with Elijah. And as a result of that partnership, she experienced an overflow of the anointing in her life that even caused her dead son to be raised to life again. And I believe there's something that happens when you partner with the anointing. You partner with Holy Spirit and with what He's doing in the earth. For all of our wonderful partners that become a part of our family, not only do we cover them in prayer and pray for them every single month, but also they receive a message, a preaching, a teaching in the mail every single month, a prophetic word from the Lord that encourages their faith, that inspires their walk with God. All of our partners receive many different kinds of benefits from our ministry. They get discounts on all of our resources, discounts on our conferences, preferred seating in our conferences. And I just want to encourage you today, consider becoming a partner with Matt Sorger Ministries. I like to do marriage counseling during my meetings. And if you're single, just tuck it away somewhere and remember it for the future. Your husband comes home grumpy from work. Wives. Don't react. If he talks to you in a grumpy way, throw your arms around him and kiss him. I didn't hear too many amens on that one. <laughs> Don't feed him a TV dinner. Don't give them the silent treatment for three days. <laughs> How many here have ever given the silent treatment? <laughs> you get offended, you get hurt, and then you just don't talk. You're like, I'm just not going to talk to you. Praise God. Here's a word. Get over it. <laughs> you know why? Because you don't want anything clogging up your spirit. So they were unified, they were consecrated, then with one sound, they make this declaration. He is good. His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Then. Everybody say then. then. Then the house was filled with a cloud. They were not only consecrated. They were not only unified. But they made the choice to release a sound of praise. And I'm going to tell you today, praise determines your atmosphere. What comes out of your mouth determines the atmosphere you live in. And they made a very specific declaration. They said, he is good. His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. They made a declaration of God. They said, God, you are good. Your mercy endures forever. You are love and kindness. And as they magnified, look, whatever you magnify, you attract. And whatever you magnify, you empower. When you magnify the goodness of God, no matter what you see in your life, you say, God, I open my mouth and praise you. You are good. You are love. You are faithful. You endure. You are merciful. And you release that sound out of your mouth. Then your life will be filled with glory. What comes out of your mouth sets your atmosphere. Praise changes your atmosphere. Oh, hallelujah. Someone has to praise the Lord. I tell you what, praise. It shifts the climate around you.
magnifying God's goodness, magnifying his mercy, magnifying his love, it, it attracts his presence. Those very specific things. You know how I know this? When Moses cried to God to see the glory, God said, Moses, I'm going to pass my goodness before you. See, Moses cried for the glory. And God said, I'm going to show you my goodness. And then he said, I'm going to proclaim my name before you. And this is what he said, the Lord, the Lord, merciful, slow to anger, full of loving kindness. He began to declare word for word what the priest declared back to God in Solomon's temple. The priest declared back to God the revelation that God gave of himself to Moses. Word for word. God, you are good. Your loving kindness endures forever and you are merciful. And they proclaimed back to God the revelation that God gave of himself to Moses when God said, you want to see my glory? This is my glory. I am good. I am long suffering. I am merciful. This is my heart. This is who I am. And God said, this is my glory. And as they began to magnify those attributes of God, the temple became so filled with the weight of God's glory that all the priests were knocked out under the power of God. I'll tell you what, you can have your home so filled with the glory that when people walk into your house, sickness leaves them, demons leave them, just as soon as they walk into your home. Because there is an atmosphere you have set on your life. There is an atmosphere you have set in your home. And when people come into that atmosphere, their atmosphere has to change. Come on now. Don't let someone else's atmosphere get on you. You determine what your atmosphere is going to be and then cause your atmosphere to come over onto them. I remember a time a few years back, we had a prayer meeting at our house. It was in the early days of our ministry. We used to have prayer meetings at, at our house, at, actually at my parents' house. And I remember as people were coming in I was upstairs and then you know I heard the door open I heard people starting to come in and my dad was standing at the front door and as he was standing at the front door he put his hand on people's heads and he just I would just hear fire 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 and I'm like wow fire so I came downstairs I came downstairs to the whole living room and kitchen filled with bodies all around the house they just came into the house and stepped right into the fire of God how many would love your house so filled with the presence of God, so filled with the fire of God, that when someone walks across the threshold of your land, your territory, they come under the divine atmosphere of glory that's on you, and sickness leaves them, and demons leave them. We've had people come, in, come into my, my parents' house, and, you know, they sit with my mom for counseling or deliverance or something, and just talking for a few minutes, all of a sudden the demons just leave. You don't even have to cast them out, they just leave. Hallelujah. Come on, God wants you to be so full of the glory that when demons come near you, they just leave. When people who come in feeling all oppressed, they're like, I don't know what's wrong. I feel all oppressed. And they just sit next to you. All of a sudden, they're like, wow, I feel so much better. Hallelujah. I believe those watching by television right now, God wants to fill your home. Everybody, stretch your hands towards this camera. We're going to loose the glory to the nations right now. Those of you watching by television, we are going to send the glory of God right into your home right now because God wants to fill your house with his glory. God wants to heal your family. In fact, someone's been watching today and the word of the Lord comes to you and God says, I'm about to do a work of restoration in your family. God says, I'm about to restore broken relationships. God says, I'm about to bring that unity that you've longed for, that peace, that joy that you've longed for. God says, I'm moving in Jesus' name, to bring healing and restoration. And Father, we loose your glory, your presence right now through the airwaves. And we say, Holy Ghost, fill every person watching. Lord, let your glory fill their house with the tangible presence of God. Hallelujah. Well, I am so excited today to share with you my most favorite teaching series of all time. 
In this teaching series, I'm gonna teach you the secrets of the protocol of coming into the Holy of Holies, living in the Holy of Holies, and then what is found in the cloud of His glory. It will transform your entire life. Order your four CD set with your love gift of $30 or more. Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or visit us online at mattsorger.com. July 25th to the 27th, three nights of revival meetings at the Canada Awakening 2. August 3rd to the 5th, Matt is at the Launch Discipleship School in Hollywood, California. August 10th to the 12th, Matt is again in California for a Supernatural Power Conference. Come experience the glory. So there are two main things that you got to think about if you want to attract the presence of God to your life, to your church, to your ministry, even to your family. And those two things are unity and praise. And both of those things go back to the attitude of our heart. When you're tempted to get offended, you're tempted to get angry, you're tempted to get in strife, and all of us every day have opportunities to go to that place. You have to make a choice today because your choice is what determines your atmosphere. When you choose to forgive, you choose to get over your offense, you choose not to let your offense consume you or drag you down with a negative complaining attitude, but you choose to walk in love, you choose to walk in unity, you choose to walk in blessing, and then you choose to have an attitude of praise. When you praise God and you exalt Him for who He is, you will attract His presence to your life. You can shift the whole atmosphere of your life just by making the choice to refuse to be offended and to make the choice to be a praiser of God, to magnify and focus on who God is. Now, whatever you focus on is what you magnify, and what you magnify is what you empower. If you magnify God, you magnify who He is in your life, you will empower His presence in your life, and you will change the whole atmosphere of your home, of your family, of your relationships. This is a key for someone watching today. This will change your relationships. God will change your marriage. He'll change your relationship with your children, with your husband, with your wife, with your friends, with church members, with people in the world. If you choose to walk in God's love, His forgiveness, do not get offended. Do not let it stay in your heart. You will attract God's presence. And I encourage you today, get a hold of the protocol of the glory. This is the CD set, four powerful teachings on here that'll teach you how to live in the Holy of Holies, how to live in the presence of God, how to attract God's presence upon your life. I wanna encourage you today to get a hold of it, feed your spirit with the Word of God. Because as you feed your spirit, as you renew your mind with God's Word, with His truth, it changes the way you think. And as your mind is renewed, your emotions line up, your attitudes line up, your behavior lines up, and your whole life gets transformed. So praise God. That's God's will for you. So I love you, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week. We need your power. Change your world. Partner with Matt Sorger Ministries.